history begins with whoever the person is. And so we, th we think if there's a medical center, well, it's always been there. Most of my memories about medicine and healthcare on Black Island is that people were healthy. We had this great sort of old time Norman Rockwell doctor and Dr. Ortel and Mary Donnelly. And you really had to be tough to make it. You either made it or you didn't. For people like Edie and others, Kim, who's grown up here on the island, there wasn't always a medical center. And yes, I'm sure that they learned to live without it and would do fine, but it sure can make it a lot easier and a lot better to have a place where you don't have to take an hour-long boat trip or you have to find a way to get to the hospital or the doctor's office. That if you can have competent, caring people right here who can provide those services, you would hope that people would take advantage of them. Here you've got time. You've got a real luxury in terms of saying, okay, look, we can sit down and we can talk. There's one person in the waiting room. There are plenty of magazines out there. They can wait for a little while. You got time to visit with people and uh, talk about things that may not have anything to do with why they're there. Can you imagine giving modern care in three rooms in an 1870s farmhouse? Um, we were seeing at the time that this became really important. We were seeing moped accidents and serious head injuries, and that kind of trauma really could not be adequately attended to in the facility we previously had. In uh, 1979, um, I was asked to volunteer to work with the Medical Services Committee. Uh, I had worked on something called community education, and part of that involved medical care and coming to recognize that there were some serious needs in the community. It became clear uh, that we needed a new facility, and we needed something that was really uh, designed and built for our island needs. Mary was one who at one public meeting said, we deserve it. And it was Mary Donnelly and Jack Gray, a very strong Democrat, a very strong Republican, who together said, we need to do this. So it took us 10 years to raise the money, to do the architectural plans, to do the actual construction. It was 1989 when the facility was opened. Unlike some health centers and some health facilities or some doctor's offices, this one was not meant for any segment of the population. It was meant for everyone. So that once there were homeless people here and they were attended to, there were people who arrived on the island on yachts that had their, their two helicopters. Um, and that person would be seen by the medical center. We've had governors who were seen by the medical center. Um, children, babies who are a few days old to people who are in their 90s. And the story is, it took a community to build this medical facility and to create this organization, Block Island Health Services. The logo is partially one half town of Nishoram, one half the caduceus, the medical symbol. And it's meant to be a community facility. Uh, we couldn't have done it without the land from Block Island. We couldn't have done it without the financial town meeting money, the taxpayer money. And we could not have done it without the private donations, large donations. Without those, it would not have been built. When people today start projects and they think it should be finished in a year or two years or three years. I say, if you really want it, if you're really willing to work for it, plan on a decade and um, you'll probably accomplish it. <laughs>